If it wasn't punk, people like Gillespie would never be in playing rock and roll at all. Imagine, you don't have to be able to play anything. When he started playing music, he was banging dust bin lids. He started making a noise, creating something. And that was the message people got from that energy and that excitement in those times. Glasgow is just a crazy mental punk rock city. He's the yob of the band as well. The main chain had the whole lot, they had the sex, they had the swagger, they were exciting, they caused loads of trouble at the gigs, and they had the songs as well. And I think Bobby was really important in that. When Manny joined the band, I think it changed the whole kind of dynamic of Primal School considerably. Whereas before, it was a core of three members. With Manny, it's like there's, there's a four now, there's a whole front line. We yeah. recorded a song which became Rise on the uh, Eve Lee album, and it was called Bomb the Pentagon. I think it's very difficult after 9 11 to have a song called Bomb the Pentagon. They probably meant let's deconstruct the military machine running America kind of way, which is like a pretty good thing. The whole thing could have got very misconstrued. I think it's a very difficult thing for them to do, to not put the song out, because it could be looked as being a sellout of things. I think with Bobby, he's always been political right from the start. He comes from a political family. His father was a trade union organiser, and that, that's always been like... And also come from Glasgow, and I think a lot of people I've met from Glasgow and all the bands have been very political, very socialist city. That's part of the, uh, the tradition of the town. The Duffy uh, getting stabbed in New York stories, like one of those kind of rock and roll stories is completely shrouded in myth. At first he thought he got stabbed in the arse, didn't he? Slouched over a bar, pissed out his brains about six in the morning. And then, then about a week later, the story turned out that he actually fallen through a glass table, falling backwards when he got out of his bar stool. I think, unfortunately, Prime is going to probably get remembered as a band that took, took loads of drugs and were pretty crazy. Whereas the way I like, the way I always remember is, is making really great records and breaking all the rules of rock and roll by actually getting better. Fans of all ages are going to be going tonight. Those who grew up with the Rolling Stones in the 60s and some a little younger who've learned that they're a hard act to follow. Well, it's amazing. I mean, Jagger's a great performer. So is Keith Richards as well. I mean, when you look at a lot of the uh, younger kind of pop bands, they, they just look like complete dorks in comparison, don't they? Just, I see absolutely zero longevity for somebody like Gareth Gates or Will Young, but maybe it's not a fair comparison because they're like the new Cliff Richards and nothing to do with the Rolling Stones, are they? The Rolling Stones touch on something of the essence of rock and roll, whereas a lot of those kind of reality TV people just touch on the essence of uh, karaoke end of the peer performers. There's a whole spate of the time where you just, you just made like film after film after film, and they're all like massive box off smashes, weren't they? And it absolutely will not stop! <laughs> Until you are dead. You don't lace them like, look, like that way all the way up. You have one that goes up to the top and the other one just laces across like that all the way. Paul King perhaps wore the worst pair of Doc Martens of all time, didn't he? When he had them all painted up and his trousers hitched up and they had the mullet haircut and everything, didn't they? It was a real kind of utter shoe disaster. But he used to be a cop, didn't he? So maybe they were his old uh, cop shoes that he painted up or something. But he had them all wrong. You don't wear Doc Martens like that. You don't paint them, do you? <laughs> Take your hair dry. You can't do that to a pair of Doc Martens. I think every generation has got its miserable bands, hasn't it? There's always like some band that writes miserable tunes for students who just left their parents to go to university. And I thought the, the goth thing actually served that generation quite well. Simple, so Susan Sue's not strictly a goth. I think if you sat her down and asked her if she was a goth, I think, I think you'd get told to sod off, you know? <laughs> ooh, yeah, ooh, don't, ooh. Help prevent spots going bump in the night. It's your first date with some girl you're going to go out with and you're guaranteed to get a massive spot in the head. Like, not just like a little pimple, but a big volcano. <laughs> After 89, there's suddenly thousands of students trying to get into the city because it's seen like the party city. I mean, if you're 18 and got three A-levels, where do you want to get, where are you going to go? Are you going to go to York because it's got beautiful old buildings? Or are you going to go to a city where you can party? Like, mad, you're going to go to the party city, aren't you? Unless you're stupid. The quote I loved about the 60s was it was two people having a party in London and everyone else trying to find it. And so, but I think Manchester was the opposite of that, wasn't it? It was like, it was like 200,000 people having a party and anybody could find it, couldn't they? Go away, little girl. I mean, it was always like the goofy ones, like the Osmonds, wasn't it? The hipper girls always like David Castine. If you were a boy in 72, the law of the playground meant you had to have an action man. You had no choice. It was the toy of the year, the toy of the decade. 
girls get the little dolls so they can put the babies and be all like housewife because that's what girls are meant to do, isn't it? And we get like little soldiers because we run around killing people. That's what we're meant to do, wasn't it? Action Man had a scar. What was all that about, you know? <laughs> you couldn't self shame, did he, Action Man? Yeah. Smashing things up is always more fun than making them, wasn't it? <laughs> now you go, let's set fire to it, see what happens now, and his, his foot will melt off, and then you just get a hammer and whack its leg off. That's the end of our Action Man, never had another one. Glam rock was something new for the 70s, and nobody was more flamboyant, more glamorous than Mark and his group T Rex. He was of the time because he invented the time, and so the Bo to me, Bolan will always be the person that invented uh, glam rock. He became this teeny bop rock and roll star, and that's when pop music twisted around and got really good for three years. For about a year, like T Rex was the biggest band in Britain, and we're the biggest band since the Beatles. It's like hit after hit, great song after great song. You're the most popular person for a certain period, and you put your stamp on it. It's very difficult when the times change. And what do you do when you're Mark Bowen? You can't go and get a normal job or get back into normal life, because once you've had that thing where loads of people think you're some kind of young god, you can't go back to being a human being. That's government property! Oh, Jack Regan was great. They like being the police looked like fun. They seemed like a bunch of guys who were behaving worse than the worst criminals were. <laughs> they were drinking, they were, they were screwing. It looked like a riot. You think, wow, that's what it's like being grown up. You could, you could join the police force, get drunk, have loads of girls, and never have to bother catching anybody. And they, they were great role models when they were about 13. He's a brilliant rapper. And his voice does sound like the, every petulant 14 year old stomping upstairs being told off by his parents. He's, he's the demon that they're all dreading for years coming out into the front rooms of America, isn't he? And Daddy didn't allow him to play sports so he wouldn't get hurt. I think it's a broken home situation as well, so he didn't get the love off his parents. I tried to tell people that my family was a little off. He had a talent uh, for, for writing rhymes and actually been able to do them on, on stage. Dr. Dre is a genius really behind not just Eminem but like so much hip hop now. He's probably the best producer in the world right now at this very moment. Dr. Dre is the name on my head of my gang. People forget in the 70s, everyone goes, oh, it was great, there was punk and there was glam and there was disco. And it's like, <clears throat> and the Nolans, don't forget the Nolans. You can't hate the Nolans, can you? Because, because they, were, they were funny as well, weren't they? And it was like, I, mean, people, I remember people at school actually fancied the Nolans as well, that was even funnier, wasn't it? <laughs>